My kingdom is not of this world. The consideration of the world as something evil that characterizes Catharism is expressed unequivocally also in the Gospels, above all in John's, in which Jesus repeatedly distances himself from this world. You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. John 8, 23. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. John twelve twenty five. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to preserve my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. John 18, 36. Cathar dualism is founded on these sentences. It is Jesus Christ himself who distinguishes his kingdom from this world, precisely as the Cathars understood the kingdom of the spirit from the kingdom of matter, and that incites to despise and hate earthly life and to yearn for the eternal life, life in the kingdom of the spirit. If this world is rejected by Jesus as a thing of evil, the creation cannot come from the Father. The Cathar's reasoning is logical, but leads to a rather disturbing outcome. It isn't to the God of the Old Testament, the one who really created the material world, that Jesus refers to when he says, Father. From here, the inevitable refutation of the Old Testament as a sacred book. Also, there are notable divergences on this aspect. There were those who rejected the entire Old Testament and those who accepted it in its entirety, and those who were the majority accepted only some of the books in it, such as the Psalms and the Song of Songs. The rejection of the Old Testament, according to the Cathars, was however already present in the words of Jesus. For example, in his repeated challenge, you have understood that it was said, but I tell you. It should be pointed out that the creator of this world when also identified as the God of the Old Testament, was never called God, nor used the word create for his work. Only one God existed, and his uniqueness was proclaimed forcefully. It is the Apostle Paul who defined Satan as the God of this world, not the Cathars. The Cathars never spoke of an opposition between a God of good and a God of evil. Rather, they never dealt page 85, with two gods, but of two principles, two reigns, that of this world and that of God. To demonstrate the Cathar type of dualism in Dante, it would be enough to quote two verses from the first and last cantos of hell. Because that emperor who reigns above, hell one, 124. The emperor of the despondent kingdom, hell 34. 28. Two emperors, God and Lucifer, and two reigns, one above and the other in the centre of this world. It was an idea that was repeated at the end of the poem from even the third guide of Dante, Bernardo de Chiara Valle, who calls God the king of this kingdom, that is, of paradise, and the two kingdoms are both eternal. The writing at the entrance to hell says, before me, nothing but eternal things were made, and I endure eternally. Hell 3, 7 and 8. Here, the adjective amounting to perpetual ends that quote in the Bosco Reggio edition, because all these things have had a beginning. Only God is eternal, not according to Cathar doctrine, according to which the principle of evil is also eternal. To my mind, in this case, the adjective eternal means eternal. All the commentators that I have consulted speak of the Dantean Lucifer as if he were an anti-god. Let's see. The canto dedicated to him, the last canto in hell, starts in Latin, which is a strange thing, given that the Latin passages quoted in the Divine Comedy are almost exclusively taken from the Bible or from religious hymns, and as such, are frequent in purgatory and paradise. And that a sacred hymn is quoted, not only in hell, but in its deepest point to announce Lucifer, can seem more than strange, blasphemous. 
They will produce the king's standards, the signs of the king advancing, is the beginning of an ancient hymn to the cross, sung most of all in Holy Week. The king that the hymn refers to is Christ. Here it is addressed to the king of hell, Lucifer. At the lowest point in his hell, Dante imagines a lake of ice, Cocytus, the name of one of the four infernal rivers of, page 86, Greek mythology. Lucifer is embedded at the centre of this lake, from which protrudes the upper part of an enormous body with the wings of a bat, which ice the lake over with their movement. He has three faces, and in his mouths the most notorious traitors are being crushed, the traitor of Christ and the two traitors of Caesar, Judas, Brutus and Cassius. He has three faces but just one head, a grotesque caricature of oneness and divine trinity, as is generally noted. And there's more. The faces have three different colours, and three colours also characterise the image of God in the last canto of Paradise. At this point, it is worth remembering that according to the Cathars, the two principles each have their own trinity.